the framework that you're talking about, about having goals and metrics to track those goals and then counter metrics is, yeah. is I think, a really important one that we basically encode into all of our teams across the company, right? They're basically mm. things that we're, that we're trying to, that, that we think are good. If basically if we can enable more connection or, or more different things across the company, but then there, there are definitely, there, there are kind of counter metrics in all of these areas that we're, that we're tracking to make sure that you know, we don't exceed or don't increase negative effects. For VR specifically, the biggest issue that, that people report is still this feeling of motion sickness. And mm -hmm. the, the basic issue, just to, to kind of break it down, is your eye, you now eyes are not, are not computers, but you can kind of think about it as a refresh rate, right? Where it's like, if, if something changes in the world, it'll kind of take you know, five to 10 milliseconds for different people for you to sort of recognize that. And if you think about what's technically happening with, with VR, basically, you're, you have to render this whole world continuously. And if you basically, if, if, if a person changes their head position or, or eye position and, and expects the image to be different, but then by the time that their saccade is, is, is done, which is you know, what it's called, basically, you're, you're kind of eye refocusing. If we haven't rendered correctly what you would kind of expect to be in that space, then it, it, it creates this real feeling of discomfort over time, right? And it, and it kind of, it's not like you miss one frame and you feel terrible for, for most people, but it's over time, if you're not doing that efficiently, then that creates this feeling that, that it creates, like a, it's a real physical feeling of discomfort. So, mm -hmm. and this is partially why the early versions of, of the VR headsets needed to be plugged into a computer because they needed to, in order to be able to render a world that quickly, you needed a lot of computing power. So it's this, it's this yep. tremendous engineering challenge to now be able to do that so much more efficiently that you're doing that on a mobile chip, which is at you know, 150th or 1/100th is as powerful as the, the desktop things, but get that to, to work really well. I would say that that problem is not fully solved yet, mm -hmm. but it's getting better in every generation. And people aren't computers and not everyone is the same and people have different sensitivity to this stuff. So, you know, some people... If a headset is running at 60 frames per second, that won't bother them. But other people, I mean, at the other end of the spectrum, if a headset is running at 120 frames per second, they may still perceive some glitchiness. And, you know, for, for most people, if you can get to 72 or 90, you're in, you're in pretty good shape. But, you know, there are, there are like outliers and people are not all the same. And, you know, at the end of the day, making this a technology that can be comfortable for basically everyone is going to be a really critical part of, of making this happen. So that's probably the biggest effect that we see. Some of the other stuff. Like you mentioned, I, I think you just need some more kind of a longitudinal study. Right. It's tough to exactly understand all the effects of anything right up front, but you want to be mindful of, of that and, and kind of and be open to the fact that what you're doing could have issues and that you want to improve those issues. And, you know, we try to research that stuff and, and, and basically try to continuously improve it. But that's the biggest thing that we're tracking right now.